Okay. <laughs> Let's see how I am. Let's see how good I am reading my bad notes. Oh, hello. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. Not my shirt. That's okay. I just came back from my semester celebration. Oh, so good at stout beer. So expensive beer, though. That and a darn good cheeseburger and mozzarella sticks. So good. I earned that change. I'm not here to talk about what I earned, though, because here at YouTube, I hear nothing. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. And as, again, I have my kind of haircut going, so. And it looks a little bit different, at least. I'm here to talk about two things, actually, today. I'm here to talk about first AEW, which aired last night. And then I caught some NWA, the villain. Yes! Martin Skull. And we'll get into that with a question mark. Outer Mongrovia and being a third degree alien champion? I don't know. We'll see about that. But let's about some AEW. It started off. Oh, wow. AEW must have known that they were having, I think, three title matches on NXT. As well. Three of these matches are probably pay per view level matches. I mean, it's just insane that there's Cerro Miedo with AEW right now. Because AEW starts off. Let's see here. Hey, I'm on my computer just that. AEW starts off with the Lucha Brothers of Pentagon and, and Ray Phoenix taking Adam Hangman Page and Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega, for the most part, in the opening part of the match, starts to go for one winning Angels. He doesn't care. He just wants this to be over. Um, he doesn't want to tag with Adam Hangman Page, and Adam Hangman Page doesn't want to tag with him. Will that lead to something in the match? We shall see it. Uh, and then, of course, so as Ray Phoenix was getting tagged out, he tagged in his brother, Pentagon Jr. And of course, Kenny Omega tagged in the cowboy shit man himself. So they're dueling chance of, let's see if I can get this timing done right, of Cerro Miedo. Oh, wow, I just broke my camera again. That's okay. I'm just going to go through this. I'm not even going to bother staring at it. It'll just be an interesting edit. That's all. Um, taking on cowboy shit. Cowboy shit. They love that stuff. Through that rhino's face. And wow, I'll tell you what then. Shots. So many chops. That, that hurt me, folks. And of course, there's just a blatant Thumb to the eye. Oh, it's good to see. You know, the heavy striking match. Kenny Omega. Not smooth when he did that um, uh, running knee thing into the corner. He kind of slipped. That's okay. I think Kenny Omega's been doing too much video game stuff. He hasn't been concentrating on his pro wrestling. Shame on you, Kenny Omega. I'll tell you what. This was an amazing match, though. There was... Oh, there was the rough distraction. And of course, Pentagon Jr., when Kenny Omega's in his corner, he's just going to choke him. Again, smart, old-school tag team wrestling. Was so good. Uh, Paige eventually gets a hot tag. Kenny Omega got his second win. He hit a pop-up German suplex. I don't know what's better, a pop-up German suplex or that, like, delayed suplex. Both are so good. Amazing. Uh, Adam Page did go for a buckshot Larry. Oh! It hit Kenny Omega. That's not good. 
And then Kenny Omega got package pile drive to Tom for his efforts. Uh, Paige was bleeding from the lip. I don't know when that happened. I'll tell you what. This was a pay-per-view level event. Nothing JR talking about beans could say otherwise and ruin this match. I'll tell you what, folks. This was a flaming yawn match. Then we have the best puck challenging Kenny Omega. And he did so in a most dastardly way. And the fact that he, Michael Nakazawa was there and I just nonchalantly entered the room, closed the door. What happened to Mike and the, Michael Nakazawa? I don't know, folks. Probably nothing good. Then the next match, again. AEW has nailed tag team wrestling. Their singles men's are really good too. But then their women division sucks. So, but with this match, it was the Butcher, the Blade, the Bunny, or as Jim Cornette's buddy called him, called him uh, it was the Butcher, the Baker, the Candlestick Maker. <laughs> With a butcher, the blade, and the candlestick maker. That was fun. I forget the exact quote, but it was funny, though. Uh, so the butcher and the blade with a bunny in the corner takes on Cody and Darby Allen. Uh, Allen and the butcher start off. There's a noticeable size difference there. The butcher's so big. He's just heavy striking. Oh. And the bunny. The bunny was full of her distractions. But Bunny has, has to show some booty to do real distractions. Um, oh, wait. I didn't say that. I think Allie has a... I don't know. If not... Hey, Allie. I'm single, too. But uh, the Bunny had the distractions. Very typical. And actually, they were really good because they really did distract people. The ref got distracted, and then they were just... Blatant, like, chokes. Blatant disregard for the rules for the Butcher and the Blade. They're, like, the second-tier cult tag team. I'll get to that in a little bit, too. Uh, uh, Cody, he likes the old-school wrestling moves. Old-school NWA. Again, <laughs> there was a Lucha Destroyer or Code Red. I just called the Lucha Destroyer. Only difference between a Lucha Destroyer and a Canadian Destroyer. A Lucha Destroyer is more like a flippy power bomb, whereas the Canadian Destroyer is actually a flippy pile driver. So you have the two differences. You have the pile driver versus a power bomb. That's why I always figured the difference was. The Butcher had poor Tarby Allen the Clover Leaf like forever. Um, eventually, Cody gets out of go uh, interferes, gets Darby Allen out of it, and then the butcher just spit <laughs> his mouthpiece in the face of Cody Rose. That was amazing. Then we had a double dive by Cody and Darby Allen. Uh, Darby Allen, because they got to the outside, Darby Allen did a his coffin drop onto the butcher. The blade got pinned by Cody Rhodes. And I'll tell you what. That bunny, though, has a, has a little booty bunny. And what were they chanting? Something bunny. Something bunny. That was pretty cool. Again, this was another... Filet Mignon match. And I have absolutely no idea how any wrestling league can ever keep up the tag team wrestling ability 
of AEW. Just not possible, folks. But then everything comes to an end. Uh, there was awesome calling in a squash match versus Miranda Alezi. I don't know. It was a two-move squash. She does collect more hair, though. I do like the fact they're treating Awesome Kong like a monster. She's getting a two-move squash in. And then she's like, I'm not done with you. I'm taking some of your hair. So I get it for now. However, AEW, be warned. If you keep on doing this with Awesome Kong, a couple more times won't be too bad. Two or three more times. But if it goes on for a while, it's going to get boring. But I'll say this was a ham sandwich. Then we had uh, Chris Jericho take on Jungle Boy in a 10 limit time in the match. Uh, Jungle Boy was very aggressive to begin with, uh, but Chris Jericho, he's. Le Champion. Le Champion needs to be in a threesome, too. Oh. Uh, let's see here. And uh, C's probably married with, like, kids. What am I saying? I need to be in a threesome. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, Chris Jacko beats up Jungle Boy, though. Again, he's just toying with him, kicks him around. Every time Jungle Boy tries to do something, Chris Jericho shuts him down. Uh, he puts him in the Boston Crab, and then he's like, uh oh, this is getting serious. I better use the walls of Jericho. This is a little bit steeper angle of Boston Crab. And eh. it's like, eh. Walls of Jericho, he actually puts pressure on his neck. A little bit different for him. Uh, and then you can watch Fight Perfect! Boom, son! Boom, Chispa! Because they're back on air. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know why YouTube kicked them off. YouTube's doing... I'm surprised YouTube hasn't kicked me out yet, actually. I'm just... Total... Human garbage fire... On their channel, but... So it goes to a time limit draw. Mm. Chris Jericho asks for five more minutes. Jungle Boy has a Huracarana. A victory roll... That he uh, Chris Jericho kicked out of that. Chris Jericho got caught in a crucifix, kicked out of that. Chris Jericho takes his belt and leaves. Jungle Boy did not beat Chris Jericho, but Jungle Boy did last 10 minutes. Uh, and then someone had an AEW replica belt from the crowd. Are you doing that? Whoa. So this match. Eh, it's a ham sandwich. And, and then we had Miss Cole. I mean, I'm sorry. Britt Baker. Picking on Chris Bratlander. Boop. There goes my computer again. Maybe it got back to normal speed. Because I'm going to communicate through. Boop. No, no, no. Boop. I don't know. Chris Atlan is supposed to be an alien. He's a pretty hot alien, though. I give her that much. The boop is, is that like the finger of doom? <laughs> I don't know. And eventually, Britt Baker tried to put her in for her version of the mandible claw, the tooth puller. I don't even know what it's called. How much I care about Britt Baker? Just zero. Um, but she just like let go. Like everyone says, Oh yes, Chris Chris Stratlander escaped the hold. No, Baker just let go. 
Oh, wow, I really did do that. Uh, Chris Satlander, I'll tell you what, she's cute. I like that. I like the fact that she's a woman, and she actually looks like a woman. I can't see her abs, which is a plus. I can't see her ribs. Plus, plus. She looks like she has curves. Plus, plus, plus. I mean, she looks like an average woman, which is good. Because I don't like skinny, skeletal women with abs. Ugh. Brie Baker fits in that. Um, I'll tell you what. What's this? Chris Sandler? Eh, she's not worth being part of a stable. Why, why does anyone want to recruit her? Who knows? Then there was a... Then... Oh, Britt Baker has to talk to Adam Cole. Or she has to talk to one of Adam Cole's buddies about how to do a sling blade. Excalibur, for his credit, as an announcer, tries to cover up her shortcoming. Being as a reverse sling blade, when it just looks awful. I mean, please. I, I know I know she has to fly from Florida Tuesday night to be at the arena Wednesday. Then fly back to Florida for her dental practice for Thursday. Just take a few days off. You're not going to be missed on AEW. Try make the better. Uh, again, Chris Tretland is he's, he's, he's cute. Is I, I should see how old she is. I'm single too. I dig sci-fi aliens. And then Stratlander eventually did a like Clash Tombstone pile driver, which was weird. Because she held Britt Baker up by her knees under her arms and then tombstone her. It wasn't botchy either. So this is her finisher. That looked awesome though. And then she boop. <laughs> Poor Tony Schiavone. <laughs> Tony Schiavone had like no clue what was going on. Um, Brit Baker's terrible. This whole match, even though Chris Stratlander was amazingly cute, it was a can of soup. Well, then we get into, oh, I'll tell you what, the main event of the evening. Oh, well, then they had like a, a Tully Blanchard and, 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 and Sean Spears talking backstage about tag team stuff. I don't, I don't know. Who cares? Um, I just want to see Tess, Tessa Blanchard's brown lace panties again. That's all I care about. Uh, but then we had SEU. SCU taking on the Young Bucks. The main event. Oh wow, this was amazing. This, however, <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm going to upgrade it to. Yeah, because this was amazing. Uh, the Young Bucks. They get the early advantage. They did the buckle bomb kick. Oh, I'll tell you what. The amount of tag team work these two teams do. I don't think they could have replicated any of the tag team double teams from the NWA in their era. This stuff is absolutely amazing. Uh, Kazarian does a backstabber. Uh, Sc Scorpio Sky. I'll tell you what he did. He, he, he kicked out. He just knocked out poor Nick Jackson. I don't even know what he did. It was tag. Yeah, it was smart stuff. Um, Nick Jackson again. He, he's trying lucha moves. He did that rope bounce thing. I don't even know how they do that. I would never do that. I'd be like, I would hurt. I would hurt something. Then with the uh, elbows, 
Oh, I'll tell you what, the Young Bucks, the tag team work. I can't say enough about the tag team work between these two much teams. It was new. It was so smooth, though. Uh, hit the over-the-top Horacrana. Wow. To the ring floor. That's vicious. Um, Kazarian finally figured out how to hit a hurt Krizana on the floor without trying to kill himself. Which is good, because he's not going to have a long ring life. Uh, there was a blind tag. A proper blind tag, though. You know, you know, because the one guy was holding the ropes, the other guy reached his hand out. But he was facing the back of Nick Jackson? I always got the two confused. But then there was a TKO. Uh, Scorpius guy picked up the, can the pin. Let's see you later. That was cool. This match, I'm upgrading it. I don't care. This was a filet mignon match. Then the creepers came out of the crowd. Oh, a proper cult in AEW. Uh, the creepers came out from the crowd. There were so many of them. Uh, they beat up SCU and the Young Bucks, the Dark Order. <laughs> and they have, it's not a beatdown, it's an initiation. Uh, they initiated two guys, they gave them their masks. So that's pretty cool. The Dark Order. Then it was the Dark Order versus everyone. Oh. It was so good. Evil Uno is a bad man. Awesome. There's more creepers. Young Bloods. I think one of them got bloody, too. The young one, one of them was coughing up blood. Ship. Or red food dye. Or red corn syrup. Wasn't like both. Because you don't cough up blood like that. Unless something unnatural happens. But I'll tell you what, there's also, there's actually, I'm going to put this up, there's actually a website called jointhedarkorder.com. Whoa, they've gone all in on it. That was AEW. I'll tell you what, for the most part, oh, wow. It was a cheeseburger show. So that's only because the women dragged it down. Wow. They have to fix something with the women's division. I don't know what the fix is. But they have to fix something. Oh, wait. There's more wrestling to talk about. We'll take a little... And now that I'm back from break and hopefully my camera's working right, it's time to talk about some NWA power. So I actually got to catch that. I realized that Stu Bears in commentary. He's a very good commentator. Uh, so, so the show starts off really slow, I thought. Uh, Aaron Stevens and the question marks there. Aaron Stevens is a third degree in Mongrovian karate. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Aaron Stevens, I don't know why they ever let him go. Uh, then Cole Cabana came back. <laughs> And now he's called this the the shoot the shooter Stevens. It was funny, and people were saying you still stuck. Thunder Rosa then eventually showed up. Told the crowd to quiet down. Lena showed up. Ashley Vox jumped Thunder Rosa, and then Thunder Rosa started to beat her up. So did Melina, and then ODB showed up. Whoa, ODB is everywhere. She must really need money for her food truck thing. Meet and greet ODB. What would I do if I ever met ODB? <laughs> I don't know. I probably wouldn't recognize ODB in street clothes anyway. So it starts off, So the match is actually an NWA power start off in a triple threat match. See who qualifies for the TV title. So that means the NWA, and it's very few, it's probably a month or so of existence. And its stage form has more titles than all elite wrestling. Wow. Because now they're going to have a TV uh, championship match for the TV title. And I like the TV title. I remember the TV title. That was a fun title. Uh, so it's Zicky Dice. 
Sal Grano something. And C.W. Anderson's. C.W., baby. He's there. Uh, this was a fun, really quick match, though. Uh, everyone just, I think the stipulation is for the television tag team title, the match only lasts six minutes, five seconds. I guess that's the original time. Because it's not the date. 12. No, it's 1. I don't know how they get the 605 from. Something different, specific only to the TV title. So I like that. Uh, so again, they're trying to get quick pen attempts by everyone. For a while, uh, Sal and CW just wanted to beat up Zicky Dice. He was so, the outlandish Zicky Dice. Funny. And there was a triple clothesline. I saw that. I'm like, how did that actually work? That was unique. Again, CW and Cell tend to double team Zicky Dice until Zicky Dice is kind of out of the out of the way, and then they fight each other. And Zicky Dice hit that snake rattle and roll neckbreaker, which was more like the ravaging Rick Rude neckbreaker. Zicky Dice won. I was entertained. <laughs> Therefore, it's a cheeseburger match. Then the Dawsons show up. Oh, there's the two brothers, the brothers Dawson. Then the villain, Mariska. Woot, woot. Shows up. Then Eddie Kingston's there. And we have kind of an impromptu tag match, the Rock and Roll Express. I can't believe they're still wrestling. Taking on Mosley and Sims, and I probably got one of those names wrong. It's a classic wrestling match by the Rock and Roll Express. For the most part, it was a squash up. And it was a double roll up match. Mm. Um, there was the end of match interview with the Rock and Roll Express. Yep, they're still back. And then they get interrupted by, by the Dawson brothers again. I don't know. The match itself, though, I could have done that. That's a ham sandwich. Are you snoring again, cheese bun? You got double outside time. That's why you're exhausted. Good. Don't play with a Christmas tree. Uh, wait. So the Dawson showed up, then the wild card showed up. They told the Dawson to shut up. Uh, Dawson. Then it's a match. Yeah. The Dawson's taking on the wild card. The Dawson big guy eventually clears the ring. However, he gets finger stomped on the steel steps. I figured, I don't know what happened to the other Dawson. But with the wild cards, again, they just like, they're, they're great. They do. All the old, old school heel tactics. Finger stomping, finger biting. Uh, again, referee distractions left and right. <laughs> the double something they did too. Then they did a Death Valley Driver powerbomb combination. Whoa. And then they had another post match interview. And I'll tell you what, the wild cards went over in this match. So it was good though. This was a cheeseburger match. And for a change, they're doing a lot more wrestling and a lot less interviews, which is good. Then we had a, a <laughs> Josephus Claus was sent to. He was tossing free t-shirts into the crowd. Why wasn't I there for this? I like free t-shirts. Then there was a Lance, a James Storm recap. I'm sorry. So James Storm recap about how he could not get the title. And then in the TV title picture, it is <sighs> Zicky Dice, Ricky Smith, uh, Something Starks, Cole Cabana, Trevor Murdoch, 
Tony Latimer, the question mark. Eddie something, Tim Storm, both Dawson's, and Nick Aldis for the TV title. And the only thing you heard, Trevor Murdoch said, you have a belt already. And Nikita Koloff was there. However, he lost his Russian accent. No, 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 no. Uh... So he talks about the belt a little bit. And then they he draws names to so the first two matches. So there's a tournament going on. And it's going to culminate at their January 24th pay-per-view. I forget what it's called, though. But, yeah, I'll see if I can. It all depends on work. I have to, I have to do all the work that day. That day is going to suck. I might actually not be able to see it. All depends how much work I have. Work. It wasn't for builds and stuff. So it was Starks versus Eddie Kingston and Cole Cabana versus Question Mark to start off. Um, Nick Alda speaks a little bit. And there's a Marty Skrull interview. Ooh, ooh. The villain himself. A villain enterprises. No long, I, guess, I, don't know if, I don't think he's a member of Bullet Club either. Which is not good. Then we had Eli Drake taking on Ken Anderson. And a no DQ match. This match was actually great. I'm going to upgrade it. Uh, Ken Anderson starts off fast. Oh, those shots. Uh, Eli eventually does the clothesline, the side rushing leg sweep. Then they go into the crowd. And Eli Drake's is like, Eli Drake. That's good. I like it when you can chant names. It makes it so much more fun. Uh, Eli Drake actually sent Ken Anderson out of the stadium. I have no idea what they were, but it was down some long corridor. Uh, I guess it's like literally a TV studio. <laughs> I thought that was a stage place. I have no idea, though. Could be at some, some some local community college <laughs> in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, so again, oh, they had the great spot. Eli Drake stuck Ken Anderson's head in the seat, because again, it's the stadium seats, so they fold up and down, so they fold up and down. So he folded up, put his head in the middle, and kicked it shut. That's good stuff. I appreciate good stuff. I like that. That was pretty good. Uh, then they start to brawl into the production area, which is kind of cool, because you, you can see the production guys are like, whoa, whoa. You don't need any of that. Uh, then there was a selfie that Eli Drake took, or he actually took a picture of him and Ken, Ken Anderson's, and Ken Anderson's face was in the like the airplane wire. Um, oh, what do you call those banister things? I mean, it's just there so no one can kind of slip down. Some stupid safety rule. I'm surprised they have safety rules like that in Atlanta, Georgia. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, into the wire guardrail, whatever it's called. And then, whoa, Eli Drake got blasted with a steel door. Ken Anderson tossed a chair into the ring. He's going to wrap it around, his, around poor Eli Drake's head again. Eh, eh, not going to happen. Eli Drake does a drop to hold to Ken Anderson, and Ken Anderson's face falls in the chair. And Ken Anderson obviously does not know the rule of chairs. You bring the chair in, you get hit with the chair. <clears throat> or most of the time. Then Eli Drake eventually won. He tossed the chair out. He won cleanly. It was a good surf and turf match. And to end the show, uh, Tim Storm shows up in the ring. He, he, wants, he, he wants to fight again. He wants to wrestle again. And then Camille is there. He's like, Camille, you have the secret. Yeah. It's called She Made Out with the Big British Guy. He's a hunk. And you're a F FPOS. An old old FPOS at that. And you got speared, Tim Storm. Oh. And oh, Camille. Oh, she doesn't wear a bra. And her side boobs are amazing. Oh, wait a second. I didn't say that, did I? I guess I did. That's okay. This was a fun. Sh this was a fun show. NWA, 
definitely is a cheeseburger show. So there's only one more show to go this week, and that's SmackDown, and that's tomorrow. So I'll do that. I'm off. Well, someone off Saturday and Sunday from this at least. I gotta wrap all these pages out. Because if not, I will get confused. And that will happen probably quicker than I could actually think. In the garbage, you know, you go. But again, it was a good cheeseburger show. NWA, the fact that they have Stu Berther is amazing. I guess he's not with Lucha Underground anymore. I don't even know if Lucha Underground's around anymore. That was sad because Lucha Underground was fun. Maybe NWA will take its place. Who knows? I just hope the NWA doesn't go the way of Lucha Underground. Because that's bad. Even though Lucha Underground had like rumored or rumored to have ridiculous like nine year contracts for the wrestlers. So who knows what's true or false about that. And then it'll be next week. Christmas! It'll be drunk this week. Oh, I'm sorry. Delete this week. Oh, no. Christmas week. So there'll be the Raw, which I think they already did the taping for, and I won't give away spoilers for that. We'll have the Two Day Dona Beach Specials, the, the Merry Drunkness Eve show, which takes place here from the Daytona One Center, which I have to make tomorrow, or maybe this weekend. And. Why do we work that? Wait, what do I work tomorrow? I work. That's tomorrow. Okie dokie. Nope, did not go there today. <laughs> that did that. Oh, I got a lot of stuff done too. No, wait, that's tomorrow. I better not touch that tomorrow. I better check, double check my schedule. That's 4 o'clock. Unless I get text. Yeah, that's six hours. So the next week, again, you'll have the uh, Drunk Miss Eve show on the 24th, and the, of course, the Leapman show on Christmas. Because I have to make the Daytona One Center. There is no AEW next week, but I'll see about TNA. Or NWA, what am I saying? Oh, I could see TNA too. I hope they don't do something. Well, they're all taped. I'll be honest with you folks. 